Hi, everyone. Welcome back to another live community classroom with Michaels. We have our friend Tamara with us today to learn how to make this beautiful Bernat pinstripe blanket. My name is Renee L from Your Inspirations, and I'll be helping with any questions you might have during today's class. Please feel free to drop your questions in the chat and we'll make sure that Tamara answers them. And while we're getting ready to kick things off, let us know where you're watching from and who you're making this blanket for. Over to you, Tamara. Thanks so much, Renee. Hi, everybody. I am Tamara from Moogly Blog, and I am very excited to be joining you today. We are looking at making the Bernat Pinstripe Crochet Blanket. Now, this is a really big blanket. Um, even the fastest crocheters I know couldn't crochet the whole thing in an hour. So, of course, today we're just going to be making a small section of the blanket so we can go over the stitches and the rows and how they work together and how the stitch pattern itself is laid out. So if you didn't get that uh, pattern already, they should be able to drop that in the chat. And I think it should have been in the information you got when you signed up for the class as well. To make the full size blanket, you'll need a total of six balls of Bernat blanket. You can see these are great big balls of yarn. You would need five balls of your main color and then one ball of whatever color you wanna do your stripes in. Um, if you look at the original pattern, it's white and gray. But the great thing about crochet, of course, is we can make it in whatever colors we want to. And this is a really thick yarn. This is a number six weight yarn. So that means we also need a bigger hook. This one is a USM nine millimeter. It's what's called for in the pattern. This particular one is by Susan Bates and it has this great uh, bamboo handle. But again, you can use whatever hook works for you. You just wanna match it to the yarn you're using. Now, of course you need your standard uh, crochet supplies. Scissors are great and a yarn needle. When you're using great big yarn like this, it's helpful to have, of course, a bigger yarn needle. So those are your basic supplies, and this is a relatively simple pattern. So I wanna go over the, the basic stitches for it relatively slowly today as we get started. Um, but then I want to show you a couple of little more advanced tricks that might take this pattern up a notch, if you will. Things that aren't normally written into a pattern, um, but you know can sort of elevate it to the next level and make it just a little bit fancier. So first things first, let's go ahead. I'm gonna pull in my overhead camera and we'll switch over here and take a look at our written pattern. Let's see if we can get it to focus here. There we go. It always takes a little second for the camera to adjust. Here you can see this is a striped pattern. And the way it works is you've got 10 stripes of your main color. They did this one in white. And then two rows, or I should say 10 rows of your main color. And then two rows of your contrast color. So you get this really beautiful striped pattern. There you can see five balls of the main color, one ball of the contrast color, and our nine millimeter hook. Now, one thing I really wanted to point out on this pattern is this does make a really generously sized blanket. 52 inches by 63 inches, that's a really good size. It's also really easy to adjust the size of this blanket. So if you wanted to make a lap blanket, or if you wanted to make a baby blanket, or you may want to go even bigger and make a king size blanket, it's really easy because this stitch pattern that we use to make this pattern doesn't have a specific specific number of stitches. You just need to chain an even number so that we have an odd number of stitches in the first row. That will set you up for success at any size. So just chain an even number to the width you want your project to be, as wide as you want your blanket or your scarf or your washcloth or your, just your swatch you're making today. Make an even number of chains. Then when we make our first row, we'll skip that first chain and start working in the second chain and we'll end up with an odd number of stitches. So if you want to make the full size blanket, you can chain 106 and we'll end up with 105 stitches in that first row. But if you wanted to adjust the size and make something smaller or bigger, you just need to remember to chain an even number. Then you'll end up with an odd number of stitches and you'll continue on from there. We'll have the same number of stitches in every row of this pattern. The other thing I want to point out, a little note that I wrote here, we're going to be breaking our yarn at the color chain. If you've colored, or excuse me, if you've crocheted uh, with multiple colors before, you may have had a situation where, if I pull over our little swatch right here, you can see right here's the color change. So you may have made patterns before where it told you to pull that yarn up along the side. So when we switch back after two rows of green, when we switch back to this orange that I made this swatch in, you would pull that yarn up along the side. This pattern, however, does not have a border. We don't go around the outside afterwards. So when you go around the outside of a blanket, you can cover up your floats, your little carry along the sides like that. But for this pattern, we don't have a border. So you will want to cut your yarn every time you have a color change and then weave in those ends. And we can go over weaving ends a little bit 
at the end of the class as well. So we've covered, you know, the size and that you can adjust it easily. And that's what we're going to be doing today for our little demo. We're going to be starting with a much smaller swatch because if I started out with a chain of 106, I don't think we'd get a whole lot further in our first hour here. So I'm just going to set aside some of my items here. Are there any questions before we begin? Looking good. Okay, great. Now, as I say, I this pattern does call for white and gray. Of course, you can use whatever colors you want. I'm going to be using these a little bit brighter colors today because they're a little bit easier to see on camera. And I see we've got some new crocheters with us today, so that's really exciting. So I'm definitely going to take my time, but we do want to get through all the parts of this pattern. So do you remember that this class will be recorded, so you'll be able to go back, slow it down, pause it, and watch it at your own speed. When you're watching on YouTube, you can always that little, use that little gear icon that's down in the corner, and you can adjust the speed of the video to really make it work for you because everybody's going to learn at a slightly different speed, and we do only have that hour today. So the first thing you need to do is find the end of your yarn. Seems pretty simple, but you wanna go ahead and find the end of your yarn on your skein, and that can always take a few minutes. And then you want to pull up a, a yard or two and just kind of have it setting off to the side here so that you've got a little bit of yarn to work with. Then the first thing we need to do, and this is something you won't find in your average uh, crochet pattern, but it's something that most crochet patterns do start with, is we need to make a slip knot. That's what's going to let us get our yarn started on our hook. So we have the end of our yarn. I've just laid it out here on my table. And I'm going to come in about six to 10 inches or so. I just wanna have a good amount of uh, space here to play with. I don't wanna to work too close to the edge because you know if you think about like tying a knot or things like that, when you work too close to the edge, it's really for easy for it to come undone. We wanna go in a little bit. Then we want to take our yarn and just fold it over just like that almost like we're making a little awareness ribbon shape. So let me pull it out straight again and show that again. Here's our end. We come in about six inches or so and just fold the yarn over itself like that. Then what we're going to do is we'll take the tail end of that yarn and slide it right behind that loop. Then with our fingers, we're going to grab that little bit of yarn that we can see inside the loop there, right underneath it, not this tail end. We want to grab right there. And then we're going to take our other hand and just pull down or secure, if you will, that tail end and the end attached to the skein and pull up on that loop. And that is what we call a slip knot. It's adjustable. We can pull down on those ends to change the size of it. We can make it then fit our hook and we can hit open up and pull it bigger if we want to. And if we don't like the way it turned out, we can just pull on our ends and it all goes away. So let's show that one more time here before we move on to chaining. We find the end of our yarn. We come in about six to 10 inches or so. The thicker the yarn, the further in you'll want to come because it's just going to be bulky and take up more space as you make this knot. So then we lay it over itself to make that little loop there, loop-de-loop, -loop, kind of like the top of a cupcake, right? Then we slide that end right under that loop. So there's that tail end right there, trying to hide off camera. Then we grab that little bit, little bit that's right in the loop there and just pull down on those ends and pull up on that loop. So it can start out great big like this, that's fine. We can just pull down on those ends and adjust it to be the right size for our hook. So we want to create a slip knot that's a little bigger than our hook. You don't want to pull it super tight. If it's super tight up against your hook, you're not going to be able to move back and forth to make stitches. So you want to leave a little bit of airspace in there and pull down right, just pull down right on the knot, just like I'm doing here. So you see a little bit of daylight in there. You can see you've got a little bit of room to move and wiggle through in there. And if you are a new crocheter, getting the slip knot to the right size and getting the chains, which I'm about to show you, to the right size will absolutely take some practice. So if this is your first evening crocheting, I recommend that you work on the slip knot and the chaining tonight. And then come back to the video to continue on with the single crochet and the double crochet that I'll be showing you later. Because simply learning a slip knot and chaining is the first step to learning to crochet. And it really does take a lot of practice to get those chains looking nice and to sort of get your hands just used to making these motions. 
Again, if this is your first time, you can hold your hook like this. You can hold your hook like this, whatever feels comfortable to you. You can sort of drape the hook over your non, or the yarn rather, over your non-hook hand. Weave it between your fingers, however feels comfortable to you. It's going to take some time to get used to holding the yarn and moving the hook in this way. So go ahead and take your time learning that slip knot and then doing what we're going to do right here, which is chaining. And chaining is how we begin our pattern. If we come over to the written instructions, it says with MC CH 106, that means with main color chain 106. Our main color is the vintage white. So whatever you want the main color of your blanket to be, whatever that color is for you, we chain 106. We haven't made any chains yet. We don't count the loop on our hook as a chain, but we're going to start making those now. Now I'm not going to make 106 because again, we can't make the full size blanket today. We just don't have time. So I'm instead going to chain about 10 stitches here because that's an even number. To chain, I want to yarn over, which means I bring the hook, or excuse me, I bring the yarn up over the top of the hook towards me. And then I pull that bit of yarn through the loop that was on my hook, just like that. And with that, I have made one chain. This little guy right here, let me get my hands arranged here. This right there is the chain I've made, not the loop on my hook, but that little guy right there, that's one chain. So then you just continue making more chains. We yarn over again. We bring that yarn up over the hook from the top towards us and then pull that loop through your chain. And this can definitely take some practice. It's a very awkward motion. Things can be rolling around on you. Notice how I'm holding on to those chains I've made as I make new chains to help stabilize the yarn. It can take a lot of practice to get your hands used to making these motions and that's okay. Sometimes it helps to sleep on it and come back to it the next day. I find somehow the muscle memory seems to help that way. But we just want to yarn over and pull that through. Yarn over and pull that through. You want it to be comfortable on the on the hook. And that's something that kind of when I was saying it takes practice and time. That's something you're kind of going to have to feel for yourself. If you don't like the way your uh, chains are turning out, rather, just like the slip knot, you can remove the hook from the loop and just give them a pull. And they all pull right back out and we're right back down to our slip knot. If I pulled a little harder, the slip knot would come out too, but I want to leave that one for now. So let's that do that together here one more time before we continue to move on. I've got my slip knot on my hook. I'm going to take the yarn. I'm going to yarn over. I come up over the top of the hook towards me. And then I use the end of the hook to pull that loop of yarn through the slip knot. And that's a little tight. So what do I want to do? I want to open up my slip knot. Let's make that a little bigger. It doesn't want to come through. That's a good clue. Let's see here. There we are. Sometimes with this uh, fuzzy yarn, you have to pull a little bit harder. This is a very fuzzy yarn, so it's got a lot of just surface texture to it. So now I can yarn over and that pulls through a lot easier. So there's one. And I yarn over. Pull two, that's two. Pull through, that's two chains. Yarn over and pull through, there's three. Yarn over and pull through, that's four. And you can just keep going until you have an even number of chains made. So let's see here. I'm not sure I lost count because counting and talking, unless I'm counting out loud, is always tricky for me. So let's take a look at this row of chains I've made and see how many I've made. So right down here, I've got my slip knot. And it's a little harder to see on this yarn. So if you are learning to crochet, I recommend that you try this out with something smoother first. This isn't really the ideal yarn to learn to crochet with because it is so fuzzy. It's just a little harder to see the details of your stitches. But if you look very closely, hopefully you can see there's a little V right there. And each one of those little V's counts as one of the chains. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oops, get back on camera there. Eight, nine. So each one of those little V's there is one of those chains. So I've made nine so far. So I need to make one more. And now we've got an odd number of chains. Now, when you go to work back into the chain, uh, the standard is way is to work under those top two loops. Personally, especially when you're making a blanket like this, where you aren't working a border around the outside, 
I prefer to work our first row into the backs of the chains. So let's take a look at those again. Here's the top of the chain. Here's the underneath or back side of the chain. From the front side of the chain, there we go, we have those V's. On the back side of the chain, we have sort of a row of humps. If you turn them sideways, I would say they remind me of the Loch Ness Monster, just those little humps breaking above the surface there, that little row of bumps. So that's the underneath part of the chain. And the reason that I like working into that is it because it, it, because it gives us a nicer finished edge on our blanket. And again, this project has worked without a border, so we really want our edges to look nice regardless of, you know, how basically we just really want our edges to look nice. We want our edges to look nice without having to work a border around them. So after you've got your chains made, then we're ready to work into those chains to crochet our first row. So do we have any questions before I begin our first row instructions? Looks good so far. Um, did just want to say that um, with this yarn, how, how do you feel about feeling your work with this one since it can be hard to see? Yeah, I think that is definitely part of it and that can be helpful. Um, I do think once you have some experience crocheting, it becomes a lot easier to see the details of these stitches. Mm -hmm. Like I said, it's mostly just, you know, if you're brand new to crochet, it's going to make it a little bit more challenging. But you can see, hopefully, if we've got a few experienced and crocheters in here who've used this yarn perhaps before can see it. When you have become more familiar with your stitches, it's not too difficult to feel, uh, find. For the thicker iterations of this yarn, this yarn does come in some thicker um, versions. It's, it is easier to feel for sure, but this stuff kind of hits that weird middle ground. If it works mm. for you to help feel for it, then absolutely do it. I do feel that there's a slight, with time you can kind of feel each one of those chains and count them that way. But it's, you know, it is a whole new scale of its own. It's kind of like learning something like Braille. You've, you've got to kind of know what you're looking at and feel for it a little bit, but also pay attention as you make those chains, you know, really, Pay attention. I'm going to pull this one out so we can make this one again together here. Just put my hook right back in there. When you yarn over and pull that yarn through, really look at, if you can, what that chain looks like and how it's formed. That loop we just pulled through, we can see there's that V. When we pulled that loop through, we can see how that hump is formed. So as you're learning these stitches and as you're practicing your chains, do try and just kind of pay attention as you pull that loop through. What's it doing? What's what's it? What part of the stitch is it becoming? Um, all these things again do take time. It's not something that comes automatically the first day you learn to crochet. So with all that said, now we've gotten through right here on our instructions where it says with MC chain 106. So now we move down to right here where it says first row, and in parentheses it says RS. This stands for right side. So that means that our first row will be made on the right side of our blanket. That said, this pattern is pretty darn reversible. So don't stress too much about wrong side and right side. This particular blanket, I think, looks pretty great from both sides. So to continue on, we begin with one SC in second CH from hook. What does that mean? One single crochet in the second chain from the hook. That very last chain we made is going to count as our turning chain. So we want to skip it and start crocheting into the chain after that. So if you'd like to work into the top of your chain, you can, but I'm going to flip mine over and work into that back hump. So our first stitch here is a single crochet. So I've still got my active loop on my hook. I'm going to skip that last chain we made, that very last chain we made. And then I'm going to go under the back hump of the second chain. And when we count our chains, we're counting from the hook. So we don't count the one on the hook. We skip one, go into our second. We're going to yarn over again. We always want to yarn over our hook. And then we pull that loop just through that chain. Now we've got two loops on our hook. The active loop we began with and the loop we just pulled up through that chain. So then we can yarn over again and now pull this loop through both of those loops. Pull this new bit of yarn through the two loops that are on our hook. And with that, we have made one single crochet. Now, just like the rest of our stitches, if we don't like it, we just give it a tug and it goes away and we can do it again. So I'll put my hook right back in the loop. I'm going to go back 
going to skip the chain closest to my hook. That's not a chain, it's our active loop. So we skip the chain closest to our hook and come to the next chain. Insert your hook into that chain. Now we have the active loop on our hook and we're piercing that chain. Got two loops on the bottom, one loop of that chain on the top. Now we yarn over, pull just th up through that chain. So now we've got our active loop and the loop we pulled up through the chain. We yarn over again and pull through both of those loops for our first single crochet. So then if you have stitch markers, and this is a tool I hadn't mentioned before, it is certainly an optional one, but it is a great one to have. If you have some available, if you don't, you can grab something um, like a safety pin or a bobby pin or a scrap of yarn or skip it all together for right now and just practice your chains. But when you start crocheting, I like to put a stitch marker in the top of the first stitch of each row. It will help you maintain really beautiful straight sides to your work because you'll always know when you crochet back across a row exactly where it ends. So for crochet, you want stitch markers that look like this. You want stitch markers that look like little um, safety pins. And uh, Meredith is asking, is this right? And Meredith, I can in fact see your screen. And from what I can tell from here, that looks really good. <laughs> so it's not super close up. I mean, it is close up, but you know, on the tiny screen, it looks pretty good. So anyway, this is a crochet stitch marker. Uh, looks like a safety pin. The important thing is that it opens up for crochet. If you're a knitter out there and you have knit stitch markers that don't open up, you don't want to use those for crochet. They'll get trapped in your project. But we're just going to slide it into the top of the single crochet to mark it. So let's take a quick look at our single crochet here. So we get it to focus. There we go. Again, it's kind of hard to see in this fuzzy yarn, but there's kind of like two little legs here. And then if we turn it over and look at the top of our stitch, there's that V again, just like when we were looking at the top of our chains. So now I'm going to slide that stitch marker right under those two loops right at the top to mark that stitch. And now I know that that's the first stitch of my row right there. So I can slide my hook right back in that loop. And I'm just going to give it a little tug. You notice when I pull, before I pulled my hook out, I should point out I pulled up on that loop because I don't want it to accidentally pull through. I've shown how easy it is to pull out your stitches when you want to. Well, you can do it on accident too. So it's always a good idea to give a little pull extra on that, make that loop really big. And then when you come back to your work, you can just pull back down on it and make it back down to size. Don't pull too tight. You still want to have some working room. You know, you can adjust it as needed, but uh, go ahead and leave yourself a little extra room there if you need to remove your hook so you don't accidentally lose your stitches. So after we've made that first single crochet, let me get that out of the way there. Then we come back down to our chain and we want to look at our chain and find that very next stitch. Just want to follow it along and you can use your fingers here this is where i do like using my fingers is feeling for that next back hump right there and there it is standing right up there for me so i've got my active loop on my hook i'm going to insert my hook right under the loop of that chain and just pierce the chain so i've got two loops on the bottom and one loop of the chain on top and i can yarn over pull up through that chain and yarn over and pull through and that's another single crochet but what does our pattern say let's go back to our pattern we single crochet in the second chain from the hook done but now we have a different set of instructions so i've single crocheted again but we're not going to keep it i wanted to show it again though for those who are new to continue across if you're brand new and you wanted to just practice your single crochets you can put one of those in each of those chains across but for this pattern, we need to do something different. We're going to introduce another stitch. We're starting here with the asterisk. Got an asterisk and then it says 1DC in next CH. That means one double crochet in the next chain. So rather than making single crochets in each chain across, our next one is going to be a double crochet. Well, let's keep reading. After that, we single crochet in the next chain. And then it says rep from asterisk to end of chain. So what does that mean? That means we come back to where that asterisk is and start again. So we're going to keep repeating these two stitches, double crochet in the next chain, then single crochet in the next chain, double crochet in the next chain, single crochet in the next chain. These two stitches repeated 
all the way to the end of the chain. Then when we get to the end of that first row, we'll turn to work back across it, which I'll show you when we get there. And if you had chained 106 chains, because we skipped that first chain we made for our turning chain, we would have 105 stitches at the end of the row. So that was a lot to read through, but I wanted to kind of read through the instructions so it makes sense here, hopefully, as it happens. So now we're starting the section with the asterisk. Double crochet in the next chain, single crochet in the chain after that, over and over again until we get to the end. So a double crochet, what is that? We've made a single crochet. A double crochet is similar. It sort of builds off the single crochet we just made, but it's got an extra couple of moves. We're going to yarn over before we insert our hook in that next stitch. So I've got the active loop. I've now yarned over. And now I'm going to go ahead and insert my hook in that very next chain. Then I will yarn over again, pull that loop just through the chain. And now we've got three loops on our hook, our active loop, our yarn over, and the loop I just pulled up through the chain. So to continue and finish our double crochet, I'll yarn over again. And now I'm going to pull through just those first two loops, just the one I pulled up through the chain and the yarn over. So on it very carefully, just take your time and pull through just those two loops. Now we've got two loops left on our hook, our active loop and the one that we just sort of made halfway through our double crochet there. So to finish it, we yarn over again and pull through those last two loops. And that is what a double crochet looks like. It's taller, about twice as tall, as you can see, than a single crochet. But it has that same little V right at the top. From the tops of the stitches, they'll all look the same. But it's just a little bit taller and it's sort of got that twist in the middle. So these are the two stitches we're going to keep repeating. So I'm going to keep repeating them all the way across here for our first row. Single crochet and then double crochet, single crochet, double crochet, single crochet, all the way across. So the next one is a single crochet. We don't yarn over first. And this one is tall, but we can just go right into that next chain. Don't worry about squishing it over or bending your double crochet. It's yarn. It's meant to be bendy. So I went into our chain, pulled up a loop, yarn over, and pull through two. That's our single crochet. Double crochet. We yarn over first. Find that next chain. Insert our hook into that chain. Yarn over again, pull the loop up through the chain. Now we have three loops on our hook. Yarn over, pull through the first two. Yarn over, pull through the last two. And that's a double crochet. We'll do both of those again. Find our next chain. We're going to go in for a single crochet so we don't yarn over first. Just insert our hook, yarn over, pull up our loop, yarn over and pull through both of those loops to finish. And I'm finally getting through that first couple yards I pulled up of my yarn, so I need to pause for just a second, pull up a little bit more of my yarn here. You never want to be fighting the yarn on your um, yarn ball. You want to have some nice looseness here with the yarn you're working with, because then your stitches just, that, then they really will start getting really tight on you. So let's look at our work. We can see this one's kind of short. We just made a single crochet. That means in our pattern, it's time for a double crochet. Yarn over, find that next chain right there, insert our hook. And you can really use your hook, as you can see what I did right there. Sometimes if it doesn't want to just, you know, slip through, you can use your hook to really sort of grab, grab that strand that you want to have on your hook. Yarn over, pull that loop up through the chain. Now we've got our active loop, our yarn over, and the loop we just pulled up through the chain. Yarn over again, pull through two, and yarn over again, and pull through two. So you can see another pair here. We've got our short little single crochet, followed by our tall double crochet. You can see, kind of got our yarn overs here, and how it almost forms like a little twisty little tornado heading on up. Got just a few more chains left here, so let's do a couple more repeats. The next one is a single crochet. Yarn over. Pull up our loop, yarn over, and pull through two. Next is double crochet. Yarn over first, then insert your hook, 
yarn over and pull up a loop, yarn over and pull through two, yarn over and pull through two. And because we've got an odd number of stitches and we started with a single crochet, we're going to end row one with a single crochet. So I've got one little chain left here right next to my slip knot. Sometimes this one really wants to be tight. This is the one that I think all of us have the most trouble getting to be loose. So if you find that this very last one is a little tight, just do your best to get in there, kind of open it up a little bit if you can. But this one does, it does want to tighten up on us a little bit. But we're going to put a single crochet in there, just like all the other single crochets we made. And with that, we have finished row one. Now, obviously, if you started with 106 chains, yours is going to be a whole lot wider. But for our little sample today here, we have we started with a chain of 10. So now we've made a total of nine stitches. Single, double, single, double, single, double on across, ending with a single crochet. So are there any questions I can answer here before we move on to our second row? Nothing in the chat currently, but take a minute. <laughs> Drink <Okay>. your water. <laughs> yes, that's what I was doing. <laughs> Always a good excuse to have a little sip of water here too. Always. Okay. So, all right. So let's come back here. When I crochet into the back hump, there's just one hump down there. If I go under two loops, that would be that V at the top. I just saw that one pop up. Here we have the row of stitches we just made. Let's take another quick look at those actually before we move on to row two. Here is the one at the end with the stitch marker in it. And now we're looking at them again from the top. This is the first one we made, the second, the third, the fourth again a little harder to see in this fuzzy yarn so if you are a beginner crocheter and you want to follow along with one of the learn to crochet videos on the michaels channel i would recommend a smoother yarn basically just something that isn't going to be this fuzzy but we can count them from the top and we can see how these v's sort of stack on top of each other and we can see one two oops let me get that but get on camera here one two three four five six seven eight and nine there's nine stitches this big yarn i'm trying to get them close up here but then of course move off camera really quickly but hopefully you can get an idea there of those v's sort of into each other we can count the tops of our stitches there and here is where we really can start to feel what we've done you can actually feel in between your stitches there you can always count them that way if you need to too if that's easier for you um, with some yarns like there are some very textured yarns out there where that's really the only way to count them so go ahead and get familiar with your work it's just yarn give it a feel like i say pull a couple stitches out and see how they look while you are making them but now as we are making an actual pattern here we want to go on to row two second row so this one begins with a chain three which counts as a double crochet so we've seen how a double crochet is a lot taller than a single crochet we need to begin with something taller. We skipped that first stitch right there, that last chain we made, the very last chain we made before we started making single crochets. When we skipped that one, that was our turning chain. That was our little ladder that lifted us up so we could work across this row and keep our nice height here. So same thing, we don't want to just start stitching. We need to create a little bit of ladder to give us some height. But a chain three is a little bit bulky, so it will count as our first double crochet. Whereas with a single crochet, we chain one and then work into the next stitch and that chain one does not count as a stitch. A chain three does count as a stitch typically in these patterns. And more often than not, there will be a note indicating uh, which way that particular pattern has gone. After that, we've got the asterisk again, which we know means that's where we begin a repeat. So we have a single crochet in the next double crochet, which would be the next stitch and then a double crochet in the next single crochet. So we repeat those across. Basically, we're working single crochets into double crochets and double crochets into single crochets, but it's just like what we did in the previous row, but now we're going to begin and end with a double crochet and we're going to be working into actual stitches instead of just a chain. So let's go ahead and take this all one step at a time. I'm going to go ahead and get my hook back in my loop here. And if you've pulled your hook out of your loop like I just did and need to replace it, you can always check, make sure you've put it back in the right way. When you go to pull down on that working end of the yarn, make sure that the part that moves as you pull back down is in front of the hook and not the part of the loop that's behind the hook. 
So as I pull down here on the working end, you can see how that's moving down in front of the hook. That means I've inserted my hook in the right direction. And that will help you keep you from twisting your loop as you put it back on your hook. And that can just, um, it just creates a better edge to your blanket. Frankly, it's just gonna uh, give you nicer looking stitches. So first things first, we had one more instruction here from our first row, which was turn. And when we turn our work, I'm right-handed, so I'm going to be turning my work like the page of a book, over like that. At the end of every row, let me get that hook back out of the way. Every time I finish row, I will turn as if I'm turning another page of a book. Oops. <laughs> if I were left-handed, I would turn the other way, like I were going backwards the opposite direction in that book. But we want to insert our hook first, get it in there the right way, and then literally we're just going to flip our work over and now we have these stitches to work into so that's how we are able to build up our fabric we flip it over and then work into the previous row before we worked into those chains for row two we'll be working into row one for row three we'll work into row two and on and on building up our blanket our chains determine the width but the number of rows we work will determine the length or height of our project so now that we've turned, we go back to our instructions for our second row, and it says chain three counts as DC. So let's go ahead and do that. We've already done chaining. We can do those at any time. We haven't been chaining, we've been crocheting, but we can make chains now. We just yarn over and pull the loop through. There's one, two, and three. And now what I want to do is grab another stitch marker if you have one. There we go. They're kind of like those little monkeys in a barrel, though. They do love to grab each other. There we go. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to mark that last chain I made. I'm just going to go under those top two loops because that is going to count as the first double crochet of our row. I'll close that up. And now I know when I come back across for the next row, this right here is the last stitch that I want to work into, and that way I won't mix it up with anything else. So I can put my loop back on my hook here. And if we go back to our instructions, we started with our chain three, counts as DC, done. So now we begin our repeat. Single crochet in the next stitch, double crochet in the stitch after that. Simplest way to put it. So now we need to look at our work. Now because the chain three counts as our first stitch. We don't want to work into the first stitch because then we'd be increasing. We'd have a stitch for our first stitch here, but then we would have worked into the first stitch as well. So we need to skip over that very first stitch. Kind of like when we skipped over the chain for our turning chain with single crochet. So let's look at our work. You see that little bit of daylight right there right there get my fingers to cooperate with me if we look at the top of our stitch we can see there's two loops right there and that little bit of daylight underneath right there is where we wouldn't insert our hook if we wanted to work into that very first stitch and if this were a single crochet stitch that is where i'd put my hook but because this is a double crochet stitch this stitch is already considered worked so we need to skip to the next one so here's where I want you to use your fingers as well. And you can feel a little sort of an indentation there where that space is. And then run your fingers right over and you can feel where it wants to go in again. If you're using a smoother yarn, you might even be able to see there's a sort of a horizontal line that draws you right over to that next spot. But if we look at it, there's another little opening right there. It goes right under the two loops at the top and our hook can slip right in there. When we put our hook in there, we pull these loops out of the way here so we can see, we're working under the two loops at the top of that stitch that we're working into. So let me pull that back out so we can look at it again. And it might be even twisting this up a little bit here. Let me make sure it's not too crazy. Okay, this counts as our first stitch, so we don't wanna work into the first stitch right there. We wanna come over to the second one. And if we pull our work apart, you can see a little bit of that daylight right there peeking through. That is where we want to insert our hook to start making row two here. Then, just as before for a single crochet, we yarn over, 
pull our loop up through the stitch. Now we're working through the stitch instead of the chain, but it's the same thing. We've got two loops in our hook. Yarn over and pull through two. Our next stitch is a double crochet. So we can sort of use our fingers again to feel where it pops in. You can really feel where it wants to jump in right there. You can pull it apart, find that little bit of daylight. Yarn over to begin your double crochet. Go right into that little cave right there. Where you can see the daylight peeping through. I guess that's not a very good cave, is it? The cave opening where you can see the daylight peeping through. Make sure you've got two loops there on top of your hook. You're in the right spot. Yarn over, follow that loop up and through. We're making a double crochet. So we've got our active loop, our yarn over, and the loop we just pulled up and through. And then we yarn over, pull through two, and yarn over and pull through two. So just like the double crochets we were making before, but now we're working into stitches instead of chains. I mean, I guess chains are stitches too, but now we're really building up some fabric of our, uh, the fabric of our project here. So our repeat is single crochet, double crochet on across. So we can feel for that very next stitch. Just keep feeling right on over. There it is. Go in there. Yarn over, pull up our loop, yarn over and pull through two. And take your time, find that next stitch. If you really pull on the fabric, you can see, you can see the daylight pop up right there. You can feel with your fingers how it dents in right there. It's time for a double crochet. So we yarn over, insert our hook right in that spot. Yarn over again, pull that loop up through just the stitch. Go ahead and give it a little wiggle. Give yourself some room to work. You don't want your stitches to be super tight. Yarn over, pull through two, yarn over and pull through two. And then we just continue on across. So as I finish up row two, are there any questions I can answer? Chat is a little quiet, but we can, we can wait for some folks to roll in if they have any questions. Right. Yes, if you have any questions or if you want to see me repeat a particular stitch over again, um, definitely let me know. We're just going to work our way across here. And then we are at the end of our little swatch. Now, obviously, if we're making a great big blanket, it takes a lot longer to get across a row. But on our little swatch here, we're at the end. And we have this stitch marker to let us know. So we're not going to accidentally putting an extra stitch in that turning chain. If we look at it from this side, you can see it'd be really easy to accidentally think, oh, gosh, that turning chain at the end, that might be another stitch. Nope, we've got our stitch marker there. We know exactly where we need to go for our very last stitch. We know for row two, our last stitch needs to be a double crochet. We just made a single crochet, so we're in the right spot. We yarn over, we can go right in that marked stitch. You can take the stitch out marker out first if you want to, but if it's not in the way, you can just sort of push it out of the way there. Yarn over and pull up a loop. Yarn over and pull through two and yarn over and pull through two. Now, row two is done. We don't need this stitch marked anymore. So I'm going to go ahead and take that stitch marker right on out. So now we can set this one aside and use it for the first stitch of the next row. So to maintain this, you really only need two stitch markers. So you can keep marking, you know, that basically the first stitch of each row and then just keep moving it up as you go. So. The last stitch of our repeat, believe it or not, for this pattern is row three, because the whole rest of the pattern is just repeating rows two and three. That's it. The only difference is sometimes we're going to break our yarn and add a new color. So I do want to get to that for sure. But before we do that, let's talk real quick about row three, just to make sure that our beginners can get it as well. Row three begins with a chain one. That is that little turning chain. We don't have a chain to skip now. We've been crocheting, so we need to add one more chain for our turning chain because we're going to begin with a single crochet. Then we begin that repeat because there's that little asterisk. Double crochet in the next stitch, single crochet in the next after that. Repeat all the way, acro all the way across. So really, this third row is just like we did what we did in row one, but now we need to add that chain one at the beginning because we don't, you know, we didn't just make a row of chains. We're working into stitches themselves. Other than that, it's exactly the same. So we get our hook in there and let's make row three relatively quickly together so we can get to some of the other things. I'm going to chain one and turn or turn and chain one, whichever order you want to do those two things in. 
Um, I personally actually prefer to do my chain for the next row and then turn, but most instructions will tell you to turn and then chain. So however you want to do it, that part is up to you. Then, because we begin this row with single crochets and that chain one does not count as our first stitch, we need to work back in that first stitch of the row. So once again, you want to look for that little bit of daylight right there at the beginning. When we stick our hook in there, you should have two loops on top of the hook. And then you can yarn over and pull up your loop and yarn over and pull through two to finish your single crochet. Then you can mark that stitch as the first stitch of your new row. And then you just continue on across just as we were doing before. Just back and forth. Whatever stitch you made last, make the next one next. We made a single crochet, so next is a double crochet. We yarn over first, insert our hook, yarn over and pull up our loop, yarn over and pull through two, yarn over and pull through two. Then a single crochet, then a double crochet, then a single crochet, then a double crochet, all the way across. If we look at our swatch here that I made before, uh, yesterday evening actually, here we have about 10 rows of the first color, and then we switch to the second color. So since we are running a little low on time, let's go ahead and pretend that we've made 10 rows and we're ready to switch. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull out those last two stitches because remember our row two began and ended with a double crochet. So that'll be a clue for you when you've made 10 rows, then that means that 10th row will have begun and ended with a double crochet. So when you're ready to change colors, then we're going to cut our yarn and add our new color. Now, again, this pattern calls for changing colors every 10 rows, but it's your project. If you wanna change colors every eight rows or every five rows, whatever you wanna do it, it's totally fine and up to you. So we're ready to change rows for our project, or change colors, I should say. So I'm going to go ahead and cut my yarn. I want to leave a good six or to eight inches again here at the end so that I can weave in my end when I'm done. Then what I want to do is take that end, I've got my last active loop there, and just pull that end on through that loop and that will secure it. Now, before remember when we pulled on that end attached to our skein and all our stitches could come back undone, now they're nice and secure. These, this one isn't going anywhere. I would have to pick out that little knot in order to undo these stitches. Great, that's what we want. We want our stitches not to come out. But now we're ready to add our next color. This is our last color, so we wanna make sure, this is before we wanna turn our work over because there's our first stitch and that's where we want to begin. So let's pull up our next color here. Let me switch out my yarns without getting the other one to roll away on me across the floor and pull up another yard or two of the next color. Again, we don't want a lot of tension on our skein. Find the end and okay, there we go, found my end. So now, According to our instructions, generally speaking, the way you add a new color, and I'm just double checking our instructions, our instructions don't tell us specifically how to add this color. So let me show you a couple different ways that you can do it. The standard way to do it is to add it with something called a slip stitch. This is another stitch that I haven't shown you, but it's even easier than the ones I've shown you so far. It's basically just uh, what we've been doing, but like I say, it's very simple. Let me go ahead and show it to you rather than trying to explain it. We want to find that first stitch of the row that we're going to be working into. I'm going to insert my hook right there in that first stitch. I don't have any yarn on it. I don't have a slip knot, anything like that. I'm going to take my new color and I'm going to come in again about six to eight inches from the end there. You just have to eyeball it. Don't, don't break out a ruler or anything like that. Then I'm just going to lay that new color right over my hook. I'm just going to kind of pinch it so it stays there and then pull it right through that stitch. Okay, now at this point, you can see this isn't really attached. I've pulled that loop through, but I could just keep pulling it through and it would all come through. Um, I could pull it back right back out. But what I want to do is I wanna take the yarn end that's attached to the skein, this is the cut end, yarn over, and just pull that right through. Just like a chain, right? but we did it into this stitch and we can pull down on this end and make it nice and tight. And basically that's a slip stitch. A slip stitch is a chain basically that you've made into a stitch rather than sort of making it up into the air by itself. You just sort of worked into that chain uh, stitch and pulled it right through. So let me show that one more time. 
I'm going to go into that first stitch, lay our yarn, basically yarning over, but we're just laying our yarn right over our hook. Pull that up through the stitch, yarn over, and make that little chain. And there you have joined with a slip stitch. Now from there, you can go ahead and follow the pattern. The next row of the pattern starts with a single crochet and ends with a single crochet because it would be a row three repeat. So then we would chain one for our turning chain. We want to create that height. And then go right back in that first stitch. Remember when we make a chain one, it doesn't count as our stitch. We need to make that stitch. So we go right back in that first stitch that we slip stitch to, yarn over, pull up our loop, yarn over, and pull through two. And now we've got our single crochet. So we can go ahead and put our stitch marker right in the top of this new color of single crochet. And then just continue on across just like we did with the rest of our colors. Doesn't matter now what color we're working with. Find the next stitch. Next stitch should be a double crochet. So we yarn over and go right in there and make our next stitch. And then just continue crocheting on across. So then when you get to the end of two rows with your new color, if you want to follow the written pattern as written, you would work across with this color and then work back across for the next row with this color and then cut it again and rejoin with your first color. So you can just join with a slip stitch like that. It's basically chaining into that stitch so that your yarn is attached. Then at the end, you would need to weave in those ends. But I wanted to show you one other method really quickly here you can use to join with sort of elevate your project to the next level if you are an experienced crocheter i want to make sure to throw in some a tip for those who stuck with us what you can do instead is join with a standing single crochet and there's a few different versions of it but the way i like to do it is i come in about six inches or so with my new yarn create that loop as if i were making a slip knot but i'm going to slip my hook right in that loop and then I'm going to hold that loop on my hook. You can see how I've kind of got it secured there with my fingers. Insert my hook right in that first stitch. Yarn over. Pull up that loop. And yarn over and pull through two. So if you are a more advanced crocheter, if you're coming back to this later, you can try joining like that too. So rather than using a slip stitch to join, I just went ahead and basically put a single crochet right in there. And then I would count that as that very first stitch of the row so you can try either of those methods and see whatever works best for you but really changing colors for this pattern we just want to cut our yarn make sure you secure that end so that your stitches don't come back out if you give that a tug and then go ahead and start stitching with the new color so since we have just a few seconds or a few minutes left here i want to make sure to talk a little bit about weaving in those ends so let me pull back up our full-sized swatch here so we can talk about that. So is there a benefit to using one method over the other for adding the second color? It really is going to be personal preference. Um, what like do you, what look do you like best? Um, what gives you the nicer edges that you, do you feel? Um, what's easiest for you to do? It really is, it's one of those things where kind of like the colors that you choose, it really is personal preference. Okay, so as I mentioned earlier, when you have great big thick yarns like this, you need a little bit bigger yarn needle. Um, your standard yarn needle typically is a little bit smaller like this and metal. Um, and some, you know, you can squeeze this yarn through here, but it's a little bit trickier. So if you have a bigger one, they are very, very handy to have. So weaving in your ends for this pattern is going to be um, particularly important to do it well because we don't have a border to crochet over over any of those ends. We really want a nice crisp border with the blanket the way it's crocheted. So when you weave in your ends, you're going to go ahead and put that end right on your yarn needle. And then you want to make sure to match the color. So when I'm weaving in this green end, I'm going to stay in this green section. When I weave in the coral or orange color, I would stay in the orange or coral section. It's just going to hide it a whole lot better. And essentially that's what weaving in our ends means. It's not anything um, you know, terribly complex or fancy. It's just getting your needle in there and start uh, putting that end where it's not going to come out. So we want to really just sort of if I get that in there. If we can see, wish this was a little bit different color. Let me try it with the orange. I think it's going to be a little bit easier to see with the blue needle and the orange yarn here. So we've got a little more contrast. 
Okay, so I've got my orange yarn here on my needle, so I want to sew it into the orange section. So I'm going to just start basically going along a couple of those stitches. And you can see, hopefully, or rather you can't see where my needle is because it's inside that stitch. So as I'm beginning, I really like to turn it over and just make sure if I can't see my needle, then I know that end's going to be pretty well buried. So we just want to do, especially with this fuzzy yarn, a little bit of it at a time. So we'll pull that through. And then I'll start marking, working my way into the project a little bit, just a little bit further inside the project. And if it peeks out a little bit, we're working with the same color, so it's not too bad. But for the most part, you really want to try and hide it inside the stitches as much as you can. This stuff, it's big, it's fuzzy. We've got the same color. It's relatively easy to hide um, with for things like thread. You know, if you want to do thread crochet, uh, obviously you have to be a lot more careful and selective as you weave in those ends. But the main thing is you really want to take your time and weave in a fairly decent length of it. Point is you don't want these ends to come out when you wash your finished project. Um, you know, you want to be able to throw your blanket in the washing machine and dryer. This yarn is a great yarn for that. But the further in you bury these ends, the less likely they are to work themselves out in the wash. So one of the things I really want to point out is that as I'm weaving these in, I'm going a lot of different directions. You saw me go this way, then that way. Now I'm going this way again. And before I finish, I really want to make sure to sort of come back maybe towards the way I came. Basically, really weave it in there as best you can to get it hidden so it's not going to come back out when you wash it. So when you get to where you think, okay, I'm out of end, <laughs> I'm woven it all in, or I've been weaving for a while, that's enough. I feel secure. A little tip, one final tip today. When you go to trim off that end and you've woven it in as far as you want it to go, give it a little extra tug. Go ahead and wrinkle your fabric a little bit up here. Give it a little extra pull. Be very careful not to cut the fabric, just the end. There we go. And then when you tug back on that fabric, that end will pull back to the inside and it will be nice and hidden. And if it isn't, if it's still sticking out a bit, you can you know, take your scissors and trim it off again if you want to. But just be careful not to cut any of your stitches. The length of yarn that you weave into your project depends um, on a couple of different factors, frankly. With a yarn like this, we've been talking a lot about this yarn. It's really fuzzy. It's very different. This yarn has a really unique construction compared to most yarns. Because of this, you want to take your time and weave in a fairly decent length. I would recommend for this yarn about six inches or so. Other yarns have a different construction where you can actually split the yarn itself with the needle. And with that, you might need as much length. Wool yarns that are wool and have a lot of grip to them where the yarn really wants to grip onto itself. Um, those can take a little bit less length because it's not slippery. Um, but as a contrast, if you've ever tried a yarn like Karen Simply Soft, which is a very, very slippery yarn, you'll want to go even longer because it's a really slick yarn and it really wants to come out of it. So. For length, you want to sort of judge based on the yarn itself. A textured yarn doesn't need to be as long as a slippery yarn, but a yarn that you can lock into itself can take um, less room than a yarn where you kind of have to just depend on weaving it in like this one. A little bit technical, but um, like most things in crochet, there's rarely a completely hard or fast rule. It's ultimately what makes you happy. And as long as you like your own project, um, you know, and you're getting the sizes and things that you like, then it's all good. You can add those little adjustments and add those little tweaks um, to make it your own for sure. So let's go ahead and come back. I think it is seven o'clock. So we are unfortunately out of time. I wish I could stay and answer your questions all night. If you are a new crocheter, do check out. I know they dropped a couple links in there and on the Michaels YouTube channel. There are some great learn how to crochet classes with thinner yarn, which will be easier to see. And I think that will help out a lot. Um, otherwise, I hope you enjoyed the class and I hope you have a wonderful night and I'll see you all again soon.